Welcome to the special edition of Gimme a Break called The Washington Mob, where it's all about the Los Angeles riots that happened a few days ago. That happened a few days ago. So we're going to give you guys the very latest on what's been happening ever since these, these riots are, have been happening. But first, no show would be complete without the COVID-19 results in Oasis County or in other states. So, with that in mind, ooh, whoa, whoa, this is, whoa. We're now up to 31,122 cases. The deaths death toll is is about 580. State of Texas, 1.95 million, 30,441 deaths. 22.2 million cases here in the U.S. and uh, 372k worldwide, 89.6 million, 49.7 million, and deaths worldwide are 1.93 million. And, by the way, the 49.7 million are recovered. Harris County, 260. Dallas, 215. Trenton, 170 cases. 71 cases. 130 of Mexico, 103. The highest cases ever is in here in the state of Texas is Harris County. But what about the state of California? Let's look at that. They're getting, they're 10, they're 10,000 close to 900 cases. If this goes all the way up to the million, the county judge is going to issue curfews. Unless the help, unless they start stepping up to the plate and saying, look, we need to come up with something. Exactly, that's what you need to come up with. You need to sit there and say, oh, what I'm going to do is come up with a plan so that this doesn't happen again. I've always said this on the show many times. What you have to do is start wearing masks every day. When you're taking Lyft or Uber, taxis. When you're working. When you're going grocery shopping. Or shopping for a movie. You need to wear a mask every day. They mandate you wear a mask from your camp. The count, your county judge mandates that you wear masks in stores every day. If you're riding the bus, you're going grocery shopping, you're going movie shopping or whatever, you are required to wear masks. If you have a medical condition to where you cannot wear masks, Like, like, if you have respiratory conditions and are concerned about wearing a mask, the CDC says that if you're showing two years old, you drunk not be young than two years old, anywhere so. If you have trouble reading, you cannot wear a mask. If you're unconscious, castrated, or otherwise unable to remove the mask without assistance, it can be difficult for some people with sensory, conjective, and behavioral issues. They are unable to wear a mask properly or cannot tolerate a mask. They, sh they should not wear one or adapting should be considered. So that's the uh, thing. So if you have a... Uh, respiratory conditions, then what you need to do is let them know beforehand so that <clears throat> those people can't understand, like, oh, he has a respiratory condition, we cannot wear a mask. Or just have a shirt that says, oh, I have a, I have a medical condition. So I think what really needs to happen here is that if you're not going to wear a mask, the biggest thing ever that you should do
biggest thing ever that you should do is just order, go grocery shopping at home. Go, you can just, uh, you can just use Instacart. You can, if you're going to order food and not, and feel like, not, feel like not going to the, not going to the food places, just use DoorDash, Favor, or whatever. And they'll help you out if you feel like wasting money. You know, only if you guys feel like just spending a lot of money, then it's okay. All right, coming up, our giveaway special on Washington Hop. I told you about this on Thursday. Talking about this, we're gonna reflect on the. We're gonna reflect on the solo, on a solo Capitol Hill. And see what, and look at the authorities who are. Look at the authorities, who are still missing, and look at the people who are responsible for this. Look at the multiple charges, and tell you about the Twenty Fifth Amendment. And even Trump can be impeached twice. All that's coming up. Stay with us. Look, it's been three days since the riots happened here in Washington because of Donald Trump. A bit later, we're going to tell you what can happen because he's been impeached twice for getting up the missile codes and now this. So what can be done about this? Here's the latest from CBS News. This multi-criminal probe expands. High-profile protesters now face multiple criminal charges, among them Jake Angeli of Arizona, accused of unauthorized entry of a restricted area. Adam Johnson of Florida is charged with theft of government property. And West Virginia State Representative Derek Evans, who filmed his protest, resigned Saturday after he was charged with violent entry and disorderly conduct. A senior law enforcement official tells CBS News investigators are exploring why some individuals brought weapons and zip ties that can function as plastic handcuffs. Two viable 12-inch metal pipe bombs found Wednesday at the Democratic and Republican National Committee headquarters near the Capitol are described by law enforcement as taking their probe to the next level. The pipe bomb is designed to kill or maim. Scott Sweeto is a former ATF and FBI explosives expert. Particularly if it's made out of metal, which is what the construction appears to be with these two devices. A law enforcement analysis reviewed by CBS shows both devices used mechanical timers and contained an unknown powder. The FBI is seeking information about this individual and offering a $50,000 reward. What do these devices tell us? about coordination and possible premeditation. It takes quite a bit of time to manufacture devices like these. It's not something that you're just going to throw together in a few minutes in your garage. The flags at the Capitol are still at half staff in honor of U.S. Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, who died on Thursday from injuries he sustained in the right. The 42-year-old New Jersey native who served in Iraq only to be killed defending the Capitol. The U.S. Attorney's Office here in Washington has opened an investigation into Sicknick's death, as well as the Air Force vet killed Wednesday at the Capitol. Adriana? Catherine Harrod in Washington, thank you. I'd have to agree. Those people are charged with disorderly conduct and for trespassing or some other. And for other. And for other reasons. Now let's reflect on. Let's reflect on that assault. And to do that, we're going to go to CBS News White House correspondent Major Garrett. So, let's figure out how it all happened. I mean, it's all happened. It all started because of Trump, because of fraud, because of those, because of the fraud, voter fraud or whatever. And then the Trump people said, and Trump said, "Okay, go out and protest." Go on protest on Capitol Hill or whatever, and then all of a sudden they did, and then the 
fight President Trump. And yet a lot of people just say, okay, I'm going along with it. Here's Major Garrett. Sedition. Until... On that dark day. Insurrection. Sedition. Until last week, most Americans thought those were words from a long-ago, bygone era, but they were brought vividly and painfully to light here. During the Civil War, Union soldiers camped here on the Ellipse adjacent to the White House to protect the American government. It was there, Wednesday, President Trump encouraged his followers to assault the U.S. Capitol. We're going to walk down, and I'll be there with you. We're going to walk down. His goal? Stop the counting of electoral votes and overturn the 2020 election. We will never give up. We will never concede. You'll never take back our country with weakness. The president and his allies filled the crowd with rage. Let's have trial by combat. A horrified America and disbelieving world watched the shameful consequence of this incitement. The Capitol stormed. Injuries, death, arrests, anti-democratic mayhem. Many did not commit violence, but nearly all frothed with Trump-inspired disbelief of the election results, something the president recklessly stoked for weeks. This may be the most important speech I've ever made. It was an important speech about an election the president had fairly and unequivocally lost. Almost none of it was true. But grievances and contempt for Congress and the vice president deepened. CBS reporters and producers ran toward the bedlam. Producer Josh Gross was caught between outmanned Capitol Police and the snarling crowd trying to break into the Capitol. I took a September spray right in the eye because I was too close to the building and was not able to retreat because of the crowds behind us. Producer Grace Seegers covered the story from inside a besieged Senate chamber. Me. Capitol Police locked us in with the Senators. Um, I could hear the shouts from outside. As the sun set here Wednesday, a pro-Trump rioter, a woman with a bullhorn, vowed to return. A man nearby said he would bring rifles next time. As the Trump presidency lurches to an end, Washington has vowed to be better prepared, even as it prays that eyes have been opened. And this nation will now begin to root out this malevolent form of discord and strife. Adriana? CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent Major Garrett. And don't miss Major's podcasts. The Debrief with Major Garrett available Tuesday mornings. And The Takeout is out Friday mornings. Find them on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. I... A professional website? I created one for our startup. I would agree. The riots started because of Trump. He believes that he he still believes in he won. But forget about it. Trump no no not Trump. Joe Biden won and coming up next week is gonna be Joe is gonna be Joe Biden's inauguration. Trump will not be there. Trump's not gonna be there and uh Trump won't be there. And but his There's still a lot happening for Trump. He lost his Twitter account, and he's going to be impeached. And he's going to be impeached. When we return, we're going to look at the 25th Amendment, tell you what it means, and what could it mean, and what could it mean for the president. Stay with us. Thank you, and welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're going to, we're, our special is about the, the, riot, the riots that happened in, con, in uh, the White House because they still believe Trump was president, but not anymore. It's now Joe Biden who's president. He's and Trump's been impeached a couple times. One for the missile codes and now for this. So what does that mean? What does the 25th Amendment mean? It's on four sections, and we're gonna give you and we're gonna tell you what that could mean. Section one would be in case of removal of the president or of office or his death or resignation, the vice president shall become president. Yes. Section 2 reads, Whenever there is a vacancy in the office of the Vice President, the President shall nominate a Vice President who shall take an office upon confirmation by a majority vote of both Houses of Congress. Section 3 says, Whenever the President transmits the President pro tempo of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives has 
Reading declaration, he is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office, and he shall, and until he transmits to them in a written declaration the contrary, such powers and duties shall be discharged by the vice president as, excuse me, acting president. Now this is in this is in two paragraphs. We have the vice president and majority, either the principal officers or the executive departments or such other body of Congress by law but via transmitted the president's pro tempo and the Senate and the Speaker of the House representatives, the written declaration the president is unable to discharge the powers and duties of the office, the vice president shall immediately assume the powers and duties of the office as acting president. Thereafter, when the president transmits to the president and pro tempo the Senate and the Speaker of the House representatives as written declaration that no penalty exists, he shall resume the powers and duties unless the vice president, the majority, either the principal officers or the executive department, or, or if such other body congress may, may by law provide transmit within four days to the president pro tempore of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Now, from another side of this, we're, Margaret, uh, Face the nation. Face the nation's some by someone named Margaret. Tells a different side of the amendment. Like what I heard, remember him saying is like the president could be on trial here, and he has anything to say, he could say it. I mean, he's been impeached a couple times. One for the missiles, and the other for this. So what? So what could that mean? Well, that could mean that if he's but that could mean, but he's still present. He's been doing this. He's been impeached a couple times, and he can lose the presidency in the next few next days. Going back to the president here. Now let's go. Let's go back to the president. Twitter has banned Trump. Trump was banned from Twitter because of the riots. And this was yesterday. I mean, Trump. Went, this is from Politico.com. Trump went ballistic after being tossed up Twitter. President Trump has many crimes with that, but a few seem inspired as much personal joy as his Twitter feed. Trump routinely boasted his social media bullhorn as he possessed. He credited it with launching his political trajectory, and he used and used it as a tool to lurk his foes. Back on Friday, he lost it and lost his mind. But in a statement by the White House, Trump said that he'd been negotiating with other sides while raising other sides. While we also look at the possibilities of better not go platform in the near future. But the sides did not reveal the plans of the uh, works. And Trump's eldest son, Don Jr., Don Jr., offered up a URL to those hoping to keep tabs on his father's whereabouts. A site that had been purchased in 2009 in recent years, a place where his books were sold. For those who did sign up, an email was sent, plug in his latest loop, liberal privilege. For Trump, the Twitter ban was just, yet, was just another inglorious passage to the final chapter of his presidency. There's no plans to immediately emerge from the cocoon, other than one White House official said there's initial internal discussion between the White House and aides and Trump doing his last farewell interview. But as of now, Trump's presidency closes out with a remarkable end note. So I would agree. I'm glad his his Twitter got I'm glad his Twitter got disconnected because of all this.
And I'm glad these people are facing charges. I'm glad this, this is over. And I'm not happy that these two did not respond to... I'm not happy that these two did not respond to my requests. These two from, from, here, in, from here in Corpus did not respond to... To all the to my requests to be on the show, that was three days ago. What really needs to happen here is that if they don't respond, then I'm moving. On, I'll move on. No hands, spots, or excuses. Coming up, 24-hour challenges for YouTube. Why is a bad influence on parents' when we return? Finally, there's all these challenges going on out there where people just do everything 24 hours. Ignoring the parents 24 hours, staying up all night for 24 hours. Sneaking overnight 24 hours, sleeping in 24, sleeping in another place 24 hours. Look, the biggest one that caught my attention was the ignoring the parents 24 hours. I mean, they're your parents. You want to ignore the requests from your parents? Ignore mom and dad 24 hours? Look, they tell you to do something, you do it. It's like, just do the dishes. And they go, Hello, Josh, do the dishes. And it's like, Stop ignoring me. You log on to YouTube and there's all these other videos. A couple I can think of was the biggest one ever from the Family Project. Cop their merch on our website. And from Carson Johns. And ignoring the husband for 24 hours. That is the biggest one ever. Bottom line is, if you're going to do this, that's your choice. Bottom line, YouTube is out there. If you want to ignore your parents for a YouTube video, that's your choice. But be warned, you're, when you choose, to, please remember, when you choose the behavior, you choose the consequences. You choose to ignore your parents, you choose to get punished. Don't say anything to warn you. Choose the challenges wisely. That's all for this edition of Game Break Saturday going to Sunday. I'll see you again at Game Break Monday. Have a good night, everyone. Take care of yourself and each other. Good night.